Hello everyone, I am Overhaul and today I'm reviewing Shira and the Princesses of Power. Now, so this is my first in the entire series review. And when I say entire series, I mean like from the things that was talked about the show, the story that happens in the entire series, the episodes, the characters, everything. I might be a bit not exactly completely there, so I would like to know how would I ha improve on these series reviews of the entirety of the shows. But yeah, I decided to break the, my series reviews so far in the SJW district, at the story district, at the episodes district, at, at design district, at characters district, and on the final verdict district. I have no idea why they decided to call it districts, but how? Who the fuck cares? Just that's how I'm gonna split it up. Also, I do not own any of these images used to, in this video. All of these images belong to Shira, Shira the cartoon, and as if that belongs to DreamWorks, yeah, it's all the rights belong to DreamWorks. So yeah, nothing else to really discuss. So let's get on with this video already. SJW or social justice. So let me clarify what SJW or social justice means. Social justice is basically supposed to be like saying that the this show movie needs to have as much female characters in leadership roles as little you know dress wearing agree with a man's strategy and basically a woman a goddess there's a, a a woman of color the best first character of them all a man a worthless fool they cannot do anything except being a fucking idiot or if uh, in case of a white or in case of a man of color he is Still a worthless fool, but not the embodiment of evil what apparently white men are. Because apparently in the history of the world, only white males are the reasons for all the conflict. Yeah. Wow, definitely not being a bit prejudiced. Definitely not trying to fix the mistakes, except only criticizing the people who just have the same skin tone and same gender as the people who have committed crimes so even if they are even if those people agree that the things that those people done was horrible and and then also to have as much gay people as possible and as little the little straight people as possible as well or in this series maybe one so yeah and in and if the show does horribly to a point that people are gonna be usually just hating it, call everyone who hates it a sexist bigot because that person clearly Lee, has no value complaints about the show, even if those complaints about our show are the same complaints as someone would use on a different show. It's just that on the show doesn't have as ma many female characters or gay characters or whatever. Basically, it's the only way for a show to be considered good, even if the show is by all meanings, thinks a failure. I mean, seriously. So, like, let me give you a comparison. Steven Universe considered a revolutionary, groundbreaking show that has basically no flaws except a couple of minor ones, but even those minor ones are practically insignificant compared to the to its entire today while well, Ruby a show that's barely has barely any which has more realistic weird terms and actually has a more of a reason why it has some of the stuff they have is seen as a is seen as a failure and a show that can never never be good be because it's because of the crappy volume 5 and crappy volume 4. So yeah, you see it. Basically, more SJW pa pa 
Bedouin, Berisha, less and more realistic, in fact. In fact, it's more going to be hated. It's weird. So let's get out already with this SJW pandering. First thing they seem to, to be very eye-sawing is the fact they said there's going to be a bunch of strong female leaders. Which I would say, did you mean that there are actually going to be female leadership? Or is there just going to be only female leadership and no man going to be even present to give any, even positions to give any advice in how to lead? Because, I'll be honest, the amount of men actually used in the council rooms to discuss, discuss strategy is Bo, who might, might as well, well, Actually, I don't know why he's there. There. Uh, the, the king of the... The king of... Father of Glimmer, who is that? And we don't even know what... How he was in the war. Hordak, who basically just stands... Who basically just sits and criticizes everyone and... What? And maybe... And two horde soldiers that have barely any meaning? And one of them just seems to be just there because why not? So yeah, not many male leadership. Well, not many male captors in general, if I'm being totally honest. I mean, the only male captors are the ones I've just named. Two, two guys who are just worthless horde soldiers that don't even... There will be nothing to lose if they you just replace them with just some random grunts. The Horde Empire seems to be mostly made of man. Man. And Seahawk. And we also have gotten a the confirmation that both parents are gay. So I and a couple of times where a man is in the background, but that, that really doesn't count. How even the whole soldiers don't really count. So yeah, basically the show has as little man as you can possibly have. Like seriously. One of my friends once said that if he was able to make a movie and show, he would say that he would make his about any women, which Admittedly, was a weird thing to say, but I am pretty sure he just said that because, well, probably just because it was a couple of a couple of seconds of a talking to. He would probably add them later. But this show, I has practically no man in any kind of position. I mean, we haven't seen any man in the palace, in the in the guards. Like we see, I believe one, one soldier. In the Mamista Kingdom, basically the show has as little man as possible. In fact, I'm pretty sure the only man they added were two men, because for like four men that were just in because they were in the original one, and they and two people men who are just there to be well, actually two four men just because they are gay. Like seriously, I'm not kidding. One what someone has actually said that they that that lizard guy who they had no idea who actually appears a lot frequently in the background is there and they want to name him just because he's going to have a gay relationship with another character. So yeah, and how even the other and how the only so yeah, this show has way too much gay and way too much everything. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is the only reason why they even won a reward. Because this show is not the type of a show you would put in the praise the gay sort of thing. Like, oh, it's some... Well, not praise the gay, just you would not put this show as a type that would actually win a reward. And that's the most I'm saying yet. So, yeah. The whole pandering to the HWs is very apparent. I'm gonna get a little more about when it comes to designs, but let's just say SJW has been very extremely seen from the beginning because, 
there's just way too much of it, like, come on. Could you seriously not have introduced at least a, a bit of men that are just regular guys? I mean, for God's sakes. I mean, I know we are still in the first season, apparently it's going to be a second season, but really, if in the second season there isn't a, isn't a kingdom in which there actually are white as the predominant, predominant, well, the whites that are a kingdom and there is like equal amount of men and women and more an equal political power and, the, and shown as competent and not evil fuck faces that cannot do anything competent, then the show will get praise. But if it's going to be a kingdom that's going to have a bunch of whites and all in mostly they're going to be just females and the only what and the only male captors will be incompetent fools. Then yeah, this show is going to get a million times worse. And if I'm honest, I'm against having incredible diversity in the show in general. Because well, every time they have a show which they put in diversity because it's our strength apparently. It just feels weird to me. It always comes up as saying, look, look. Uh, we have a uh, white female. We have a black man. We have a black woman. We have a black. We have a black old man. We have a Latino man. We have a Latino woman. We have a Asian woman. We have a. Uh, we have a brown woman. I mean, this show really makes it look like the only reason why there even are diverse characters uh, is because. Look how many of them we have. Granted, the, the different cultures and all that does make sense because there are supposed to be different nations and if different kingdoms. But consider how many kingdoms we haven't even seen and the watchers of the original show can probably tell me how many of them we can still possibly see. But... Yeah, I feel like they're going a bit overboard with the diversity to a point that I'm even questioning what it, to the point that I'm actually even wondering is it possible to consider it racist if you constantly praise it because you have one of that type? Seriously, what's up with that? Story. So yeah. The story of Shira and the Princesses of Power is this. The, there's the evil horde who wants to destroy the, the world, well, rule the world. It's only established that they want to destroy the castles. For what else, it's, I don't believe they ever say what else is going to happen. But yeah, they're going to destroy the princess resistance and everything. And there's a Dora, person that she was adopted by the horde and trained and to believe that the Horde are actually heroes, while well, reality they are the embodiment of evil. She, she get after she she sees the beauty of the world uh, and the real face of the Horde. She conv is convinced to join the resistance, and when she finds the magical sword and becomes Shira, she's sh she and her friends Glim and Bow are going to assemble the princesses to attack to attack to fight against the evil horde and to win and to save the Aphidia I believe just for a generic na alien pla alien planet name who the fuck cares at this point to so oh, the the peace and beauty and pers and everything will be good will end good so yeah the story is a pretty generic war story, and it's not. And there is a billion problems with some of the things that how they are portraying things in the show, because the story in general is actually pretty good. Like not that many complaints, but when it comes to just some aspect like the horde being a threat. It's not there at all. Things like the princesses ruling the kingdoms, there is nothing there as well. 
Hell, half the time it doesn't even seem like the other kingdoms have any forces to actually fight against the Horde. Just have, I mean, oh, I'm pretty sure most of the kingdoms only seem to have their princess and maybe a couple of a handful of people. But outside of that, nothing. And yeah, it's very underutilized. Yeah, it's pretty boring. The story in general is alright, and there is also the part about Adora discovering who she is and becoming that. But outside of that, there's nothing really to discuss except that it's very horribly portrayed half the time. Like, seriously, if your point of the story was supposed to be to in to ensemble the forces, why are there so little to soldiers that we actually see? I mean, seriously, in the final episode, I know this is a bit for the next part, but in the final episode of the season, I don't believe we see a single soldier at the battlefield. I think we only see the princesses and that's it. Only princesses, bow and Swiftwing. And Seahawk shows up later, but I don't believe he does much. How even the whole doesn't seem to have that impressive of an army, considering the fact that they seem to just have a couple of battleships. How I don't even think we see any other generals, or commanders, or force captains, or whatever they have. And the other three guys who constantly appear. Seriously, I'm pretty sure we have, we just see the same army, army that we've seen before on the couple of their flying ships and that laser, the ball thing. So yeah, the story is good, but some of the aspect how they portray it, it's, it's just bad. Like, it's unbelievable how bad it is. Episodes. So yeah, let's get through the episodes already. The first two episodes were basically how would you expect. Showing Adora that the Horde is actually evil, establishing Catra, Bo, Glamour and Adora, uh, introducing to the sword, giving us some little things with Shira, and basically all the things that it's, we are basically used to seeing. The third episode is supposed to show off Shira to the Queen and Adora that she is actually that she actually worked for the Horde, which is not very good. I feel like some people, which I'm discussing the fourth episode, which is really good, and the fourth episode is basically to a good perfume. To the resistance, it gives us a little bit about the lore. I mean, we also get some facts about the lore in the previous episode with Shira and all, but it's basically the genetic lore we always get at the beginning of a character. So yeah, yeah, we say so in the fourth episode, like I said, goes with Perfuma, and there's some hostility, and I don't need to, to prove herself to them, which. Alright, I'll be honest, I have a little bit of a problem with everyone being so offensive against a door. Like, yeah, the Horde is evil and all, but it's clear Dora had no idea. And no one ever saw her until she got accidentally exposed. And also, that's kind of their fault that they even know of Adora being previously a member of the Horde. Like, seriously. The only thing they really had to do was have Adora ch uh, change her sh shirt and destroy the shirt for God's sake so, and destroy whatever it could be ever proven that actually is if she's connected to the Horde in general. Put some new clothes on, some that look more like you'll find that around that kingdom and that whole thing would be fixed. No one would have any idea. And hell, later in the season, it would be revealed that she's actually a that she was actually a member of the Horde. Court, and since it would be revealed so in such a way, they could have like, yeah, you may be a member of the Horde, but it's actually understandable why. Like, we could have the build up like every single mem every single person f would be 
Talk about which would be much better if you ask me. But yeah, the, that's... But yeah, in Perfuma episode, we basically get nothing. There's like... The big flaw with it is the fact that Perfuma addresses... Sends a Masha such that she needs help, but... They don't even... When she arrives, they don't even tell her the threat, they just assume it'll be fixed, which is stupid, but considering what we've seen from the operators, it's still more competent. The fifth episode, we meet Mermista, who is just amazing how incompetent she, she is. Like, so yeah, they go there to assemble it, and they meet Seahawk, and they... Basically, they have the stupidest thing where apparently, where apparently they have this power scaling is actually the main focus on the show. But if you actually look at it, it goes like, we a giant muscly alien looking guy, then Seahawk, then Adora about the Shira sword, which is just ridiculous. Especially since in the last episode they had her. A completely foolish shot, so what the heck are they going with? And yeah, then they go to Mimis. They need to go to Mimista because apparently the only direct way to the moon to the moon's castle, or whatever the castle is called, that Glimmer and her mother are uh, the queen and princess of, are uh, is apparently through the what river, which seems like something that'll be a lot more used against than it should be like the way we see it i would expect more like an uh, entire fleet of the hot ship sh shooting at the, the barrier we see in that bear and uh, especially when the barrier starts to flipper not just when kantra is sent with her ship against that i mean you expect a lot more oh wow the only reason they even sent there is because shall we rest well some for the copies is following her. So yeah, they basically go there. And that, uh, they basically go to the generic thing, the Mimista doesn't even fucking care the, the fact that the barrier that's going is oh, starting to f fail and the fact that there are people abandon her, which, whoa, talk about peep the weird people. Like, seriously. Everyone except one god abandoned her. Which is just, why did only one person stay? Wouldn't it make more sense to just be a mister? And she doesn't even seem to care that much. So yeah, the episode was a suck fest. During the sixth episode, we get introduced to a chapter who is, is supposed to be jo join the rebellion because her technology is very good and since the horde seems to have only that to be there up their thing that keeps them up again still in charge of the war even though in literally the two episodes ago or one episode ago we've seen the horde soldiers being defeated by leaves so they can't be that high and hell, consider how it seems like the only soldiers we get from the chapter is building robotic ones. Which would be cool. Then in the seventh episode, we get a little break and they are gathering the princesses to go on a vacation and get a little bit of a backstory, a little bit about Shadow Weaver. Which is pretty much an uh, exile for being evil thing and Adora is kind of freaking out because of the Shadow Weaver and she ends up beating Shadow Weaver and preventing the, her to get control of the castle or whatever it was. Or the spa. Why would the castle even have a spa? It's so strange. So yeah. She wins and she gets a bit of a, of a boosted confidence. So yeah, that's basically how it goes. And then we get a little, and then we get a little bit of a foreshadowing for Katra. Katra. Well, not for sure of catch up period. We actually see her a lot throughout the show. I think we only don't see her in episode six, but basically the next episodes we get a bit more of her. her. Now in episode eight, eight we get a princess ball. 
if someone said a princess boy is just someone's obsession, someone getting revenge for how they had at the school year, you know, the dance or whatever, you would not be completely wrong because how does a princess ball actually even come up? Come up with all these type of stuff. But yeah. Yeah. They had some stupid stupidity in which they basically have gay dress up for it and Katra convinced convinces Scorpia to come and help her. And maybe she says the plan to anyone else because we see her later have two minions with her and and in the next episode also Shadow Weaver and Hodak also knew about the plan. It's just that Shadow Weaver was telling Hodak she's the one who come up with it. So I don't know why was that it. So in that episode we meet Foss star which i'll go talk about her character later and yeah it's basically the next thing like it's clear this is supposed to be the moment where the heroes fall because glimmer and bow get captured and the king of mom of fosters is let's just say not exactly going to have a good relationship with them and basically just, just not usual and yeah then the ninth episode we get to see see the how the queen is reacting when she finds out her daughter is captured and she needs to give herself to the horde so yeah Adora said that she'll go and fight and fight them alone if she needs to to save them because she has experience with in the, how the horde works and all that so yeah then in Trapta, Perfuma, Mamista and Seahawk come there and they and to help because they had to do something even though I'm pretty sure how in chapter's character was talked to about in the episode 6 it doesn't make sense but who cares really so yeah they come there and they want to save save they have a bit there's too much comedy in this episode to really that actually draw is it back down extremely but yeah, they managed to save perf they managed to save Bo and Glimmer and 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 Adora seems to get some confidence the chapter the catcher might join the, the resistance or the rebellion. But in Trapta gets left behind and Oh the it, it should die. But yeah. In the next episode 10, we get some of the basically the some of the things. Because in the previous episode, Glamour lost her, well, had some kind of a weird magic to prevent her from teleporting, and now she's unable to teleport. And Adora needs to go and fix her. In the meantime, there's some consequences to show you because of the failure that she was in the previous episode that Katra fights in chapter because she's alive, which was probably no shocked. This show doesn't give me the time of. I feel like this show would actually kill off a female character. How even in even Shadow Weaver's case in the next episode, we don't even get that. So so yeah. And and Trapta basically is, uh, brings up the first one stack, which wasn't which was bring up before, but this is where when it's going extremely into it. Also in her episode, they were, because of the first one stack. Uh, a bunch of robots went to kill everyone, but that's really nothing. If I'm being totally honest. So yeah, they go there and they... F f and Adora and Katra find the location of where to go find some more about... Think more about the Shira and all that. And then we get into the episode that seems to be considered to be the best episode of the series. And a good episode, in fact, some people call it. Also, the reason why I'm not going into big of an analysis with, uh, with the episodes is because there are people like Crimson Sim and Mute Hunter who are going to deep episode analysis until episodes talk, talk about every single prospect of the episodes. So yeah, that's something. But yeah, the episode with Catra and Ador seems to be considered to be the best episode. So yeah. They go there and they basically we find how the childhood 
childhood was for these two. And all the effects, which we're gonna get a couple of good seats with Katra and Dora and all that. And we have a very cool adding with Katra's like, This sword will not work for me, will it? Well, if it's not, then let's just throw it away. And she's like, Bye, Adora. And basically, because after Adora left, Katra, let's just say from a person that was constantly being picked on, is now the fucking force captain and seems to be the most competent force captain of them all. I mean, I don't believe we actually have got established some our captains even are. But yeah, who really cares? In the next episode, we actually we get basically just genetic, genetic things like, like the shall we be defeated and outserved by Catra and basically get the the create a device and a to basically the to basically weaken the forces of the resistance as much as possible and bow glimmer and swift wing save come to save Adora and so they'll get ready for the final battle and the f finale of the episodes are just like all the princesses even foster come and help them beat because they were kind of underpowered because apparently they don't, they don't have military like seriously how the fuck is the resistance even able to stand if they don't even have the military for god's sakes so yeah it's basically the generic final and the only thing that actually adds is what is that it catcher is now the second command and interrupter is now 100% fully going to be working for the Horde and people actually knowing that she's working for the Horde. Because, let's just say be before this episode, it's actually very ambiguous if the rest of the Horde actually knows that she's working for them. So yeah, design. So yeah, let's talk about the first topic we have when it comes to the show. That's how much of a bad designs and everything we get in this show. Then we get in the oh, in the previous one, which let's talk about the good designs and the bad and then the bad designs. The good designs are some of the locations like for the Kingdom of of Dry. Although I would prefer that if there were more people, I do like the the location and the how it looks like. The hood also a very good the hood. The location of the hood also has pretty good design, but I feel like they, it, it it looks too much like a junkyard sometimes, but outside of that, it's pretty good. And some of the other people, people also have very good designs. Like the hood soldiers have excellent designs. Designs. And sometimes the background characters also have good designs, but there's not thing really that special that I should address. Uh, but there are also a lot of bad designs. For example, at the Princess Ball episode, there's the, the background the characters look incredibly weak and in generally in every single guard or soldier or whatever they are in or in the rebellion look less like Soldiers and more like some decorations to show off how their kingdom does look like. Like, you know, those perf dancers performing like Chile or something. Like, they don't look good. And the two main characters I think I should talk about the designs that really bother is me is Madame Mim, who looks less like the original one and more like a Jenna crazy witch character like I know in the original one she was a witch but did they really have to go with this design it looks too much generic I'm pretty sure Disney has an, the, a similar character design in the witch from the brave movie like it's this basic concept the same so yeah not very good and Let's just say this is one of the cases of redesigns where they actually looks worse. Because guess what people, not all the redesigns in the show are better than the original. Not all of them. And the best example of why not all redesigns are better than the original one is this little imp. I believe his name actually is imp, but who cares about it. 
In the original general show, the imp was a shape shape there that was annoying as fuck, but still. At least it was something. It was an annoying shape shape there who had a bit of a more of a which had a hellish demonic thing like the general prospect. It was but it also had fangs and a bit of that pig nose or something like just a bit more of an animalistic type of a body. But this imp looks like Although, granted, I do prefer the idea that he cannot talk, that he's more like an animal with a talking with a way to relay message to people, but just why that? It just looks so bad. I mean, really, it looks like this seems more like something like if the if Hordak had a son that he said, this is how, this soon will be what you will be ruling of everything. It feels more like that seems to be more his design in someone that's supposed to make sure there's no, you know, no chance of someone betraying you, you, instead of, just, what the fuck is up? I mean, seriously, as much as the show gets praised for the redesigns, the, the, his, this Imp's designs and the Madame Mraz, like whatever her name is, redesigns look Bad, they look more generic and more stupid. Characters. So we finally get to characters. Let's begin with the designs. Adora and Shira's design don't look that bad if I'm being honest. I mean how they look pretty generic and what I would expect. Expect. I mean there's nothing really to talk too much special about. And the design is so I do actually like. Well, I may not have picked the best images to surprise, to show off, because these images don't seem to have a lot of drawing error. But yeah, for the most part, their designs are good. I will need to ask what's up with the shoulders, the pads and whatever, because, because it just looks weird. Also, I don't believe we actually even see how the cape is being, being put together, because it... I don't believe it's ever sewn her back, so and every time we see her back, it's always just quick damages and nothing else, so it looks not very good. But outside of that, the design of Adora is pretty good. Now her character. It's so ambiguous if she's supposed to be taken seriously as a powerful soldier, or as an incompetent fool that just is being place the most powerful equipment of the entire planets. Like, seriously. One second, she is supposed to be able to single-handedly beat a guy who is showcased that he's a lot stronger than he looks like, and she can know she can still beat him, have a bow using Shira form, but the next time she's gonna have a problem with using a sword in a room. Okay, it's so stupid. Although her character is getting better when it comes to Katra, you do need to ask yourself how much does she really even care about the Horde? I mean, until the episodes with Katra, she doesn't just seem to bring up anything of that, like having the other characters don't say, so are you sh so are you completely fine with fighting against Katra? against the horde, I mean, you were raised by him a lot, and I don't like the whole idea with the whole being, her being an orphan thing, which is good, because that does put in more a uh, character prospect into her, but still, it's not really used to its full potential, I mean, half the time it feels like it's just put in because it would be horrible not to put it in, so yeah, Adora is a Oh, it's a pretty average character, and it's nothing really that special. Glimmer. Her design is alright. I am gonna ask why the heck did they give her these wider legs? Well, it seems like and sometimes they give her normal legs. And I do need to wonder if she's supposed to be la the Latino woman. No, in some scenes, but in this one it seems pretty obvious that she's a white woman. How I'm the only just in that because uh, that show seems to be praised for this. But who really cares? 
She's basically supposed to be this character that's first so irass and so head first into danger and all that. And but still supposed to be a good leader and all that. Which is not very really used. The basic parts that are supposed to show her, her growth and all that is at the end. But if you ask me, her leadership and all that was placed the best in episode 5 where she says, Alright, since the Mista is the princess of an when kingdom that's basically the only thing that keeps from the whole attacking us by water it would make sense that we get her help like outside of that i don't i wouldn't exactly say there's anything else that would be done to give her praise praise that much i mean later she does some needs does something more when it comes to the fact that she doesn't want to disappoint her mother but yeah i don't even it's not really done very good. I mean, calling her a spoiled brat is actually a pretty accurate statement. Bo, one of the few male characters in this show. So yeah, Bo is probably one of people's favorite character, which is probably because he's actually competent to the point that he's not going to start minus racket, rack catch about actually thinking about it and the fact he can actually build stuff stuff but I feel like a lot of people are only focusing on, on the fact that he ooh is he more a princess or something because he has glown and in the previous image that I've shown you you've seen how he glows like all the other princesses but Seahawk doesn't glow but yeah and the fact that he apparently has two fathers Oh boy, why is this a thing we are discussing when it comes to characters? Like seriously, for the most part, uh, Bo takes a side, side, takes a side back for the stories because he's not really done much. I don't even say he has that many character defined moments. Like there are times where he like says to pe places the people so, so they'll come and fight them like when it came to the kitchen stuff against the robots but for the most part it's basically generic so yeah it's basically all the things you would kind of expect as oh uh, and also and also i feel like he's a bit demasculated like how apparently all the shows right now seems to make seem to be making their male characters look more like female characters with with a the what a um, male body. Who knows how long we are going to be waiting until he's going to be wearing a dress. Which actually I think he was wearing a dress in the original episode. But I'm pretty sure that in that episode he was forced against. He was supposed to just be forced against his will or something. Like oh I can. I can. I am only hoping it's not going to be too much. The next character we have Kacha. And her design is one of my favorites. I mean, not to say that her original design was bad, but this design is definitely a better. I like the different color in her eyes. I like the whole cat mo motif with her. I mean, I'm a sucker for cat girls in general, but who really cares? I like her character because it's one of the better character ones. Because it actually shows to her that she's actually like... Oh, not completely obsessed with Adora, even if she does seem to have a heart out for her, but who really cares? So, I do like it a lot. Also, it is shown that she's actually able to fight on par with Shira. At least in the final episode is, because she does pretty well. Which is admittedly a bit strange, considering, well... I mean, apparently Adora and Katra should be at least a bit equal when it comes, but then Shira is supposed to be even more powerful, but yet Katra is able to fight on par, or well, not have the possibility of beating Shira in a fight, but at least, you know, being, have a good chance at beating her. So yeah, she's definitely one of the better characters, and although I don't exactly want her to be the final antagonist or or I would even compare her rivalry against Adora like Vegeta's rivalry against Goku like seriously some people actually think that 
Gacha and Adora have equal rivalry compared to Goku and Vegeta. Duh. And actually some people also put in Rey and, and Kylo as there and I'm just like... Are you flipping serious? But that's not really her flaw, that's the flaw with the... Uh, with the liberal community in general. The next character we discuss is Perfuma. She's considered to be the most competent of the princesses, considering the fact that she at least raised the alarm, and although she may, and the fact that she's actually, you know, using a brain cell in the episode in the in the prison break episode because she actually says, "No, we can't go back. We need to trust Adora," as she, she and all that. But yeah. It's very just the fact that she's actually shown to be competent, which people like. I'm not a really big fan of her design, but how it's good. Good with her. Who really care? Cares that, that much. The next one is Mermista, and she, although her design is decent as well, it's her design personality is a bit too much like, yay, uh. Oh yeah, great. Like, too much just... Like... I'm here, don't make a big deal out of it. Just... Just too much... Just too much disinterest and bored. Like, it would be funny if it was like... This was this big... This was a big crisis and she clearly is aware that it's a big crisis and... Every time she speaks it would be like... Oh no... The Seagate is going to fall apart. What can I do? Like, it'll be one thing that she sounded disinterested but was actually concerned. Then it would be funny. Like, it would be a little good cap to work with her, which you can never tell if she's actually disinterested or, and when she's not. But considering the fact she actually is disinterested, because when the Seagate was about to fall and the uh, Hort was practically already counting seconds until it falls. Come on, we want to kind of invade and all that. It was just ridiculous. But yeah, I do kind of wish she would... But yeah, for the most part, she's... Alright, I kind of wish more of her. Entrapta. My favorite character in the show purely because of her design. And I actually do have some interesting theories about her. For example, one of my theories is... And one of my theories is the fact that she was actually abandoned by her parents for some reason because when we are in the palace we see her picture of her and two robots that seem to be dressed as her pa as parents. So my theory is that her parents actually abandoned her and that's why we don't see the Kino Queen or anything else because let's just say in Perfuma and Mamista we don't see their parents anywhere. I mean, Mr. Manchester father, but outside of that, nothing. And I do like the, the fact that that's maybe a possibility. I also do think that there might be the room stone, which every single princess should have. It, it might be at her... Be hide, hidden behind her hair, because look at those things! Who knows how many... Who know if there was like a crystal glow out from her head, it would actually be hidden from the hair. But that's most likely not the case. But it would actually be interesting if she finds out that, oh wait, I have crystals? Oh wait, the my room stone was actually connected to my crystals? Because so far we have no explanation why she doesn't have a room stone, but yet she's able to use magic. How, in the episode that she actually tells us that she doesn't have a room stone, she says that if a princess is not connected to her rune stone that she doesn't have any magical capabilities aka Scorpia. So yeah. She's basically the technician and also when it comes to her design she's actually one of the few char people, characters I do need to agree with the labels when they say look at her original design compared to this design. Admittedly her, re her redesign is actually pretty good. And it's bad in the original one. So yeah. She's the best character, even though a lot of people hate her, and I can see why. I mean, all the people that get, hate her and her episode 
I can totally agree and I can totally understand every hate and uh, I'm not saying they're wrong. If anything, I'm wrong because I purely just like her because of her desi design. And she is best girl in in the show in Princess of Power. Also in Winner Star Trek of Best Girl and um, Liberals, even if they're not drawn in the show extremely sexualized, we can find images of her being extremely sexualized in on the internet. How? Just how even I can do that. I could just grab a piece of paper, paper, a pencil, I just write draw them extremely sexual. It's not just because the show doesn't have it. That doesn't mean we cannot do that. Just something to talk about because apparently people one of the complaints people some of the defense people use in Shira and the Princess of Power is that people hate it be just because they aren't beautiful women and to do some <clears throat> adult stuff with. Yeah. It doesn't work. It's the age of internet. Have you been on the internet or have you just been if you aren't focusing on just on the lib on the liberal cartoons, you find out it's extremely easy to find big busted women even when they're not. Sakura from Naruto will explain it all. So yeah, in chapter, my favorite character purely by design. And her personality is very good. The next character is Scorpia. And again, I'm kind of a sucker when it comes to the villain's designs because I always for me, a good and a bad design show is going to go primarily to the how the villains are designed. And Scorpio's design is excellent. I would definitely pick this design over the original one. Although at times it feels she's a bit too manly looking. Like if you would watch some person just making a video on Shira and it was not a review, it was it was just a it was just a, like, a fairy video in which she just shows up and she's not even the main focus on it. And you did not even watch the original one. You would assume Scorpio was a dude with make with lipstick. Well, just naturally black lips. So yeah, sometimes it feels Scorpio is a bit too masculine. Too of a much, too much manly over too much of a manly design, but that could also be the fact that the show doesn't even have that many manly characters, male characters. And I should also address the fact that she gets taken down way too easy in the show. Like, what's the point of this big character? Because I believe it was referenced by Catra and Ball that she's, whoa, she's big. And she's shown to have superior strength and, well, she's a scorpion character, for God's sakes. But... So far, it's basically just a, but she gets taken out easily. Like she just jumps in well when it comes to the first fight she's in, then the second fight, then the next. She just gets easily with a weapon roll phone off the phone away. Like it was nothing. Like you could literally just have a regular two grand soldiers having that. How would be more believable? And yeah, and then in the final battle, she just gets covered. She just gets stuck in nets and then just gets a, be a minor new sets against Glimmer. So yeah, I feel like the show is not doing anything with her. Like, you wanna, they like praise the female characters as much as they want, but when it comes to Scorpia, they don't even do anything with her. Yeah, that actually follows up to another SGW thing, and that is make female villains look as weak as possible, but when it comes, when it comes, when to be actual antagonists, but when you're not coming to be specific antagonists, like just looking cool in the background, or having a romantic relationship with the hero character, make them as good as possible. Yeah, it's a problem. The next character is Natasha. Now this character has actually been in the series for a long time, like I believe she's like the second or the third, second or third princess or the fourth, Fourth princess we get introduced to, and yet she does practically nothing. It does also help that her design looks weird and just what the fuck's up with her design? Just looks weird. What's even that supposed to be? Is that like connected? Is that just her design looks weird? And also, she's a token lesbian character. Everyone, if you think I'm wrong, I am not mistaken because that's literally 
the only thing about her, she's less, she's in love with Spinarella and Spinarella's in love with her. Because apparently every goddamn show needs to have a lesbian character whose only characteristic is lesbian. Yeah, but it's just stupid. Nothing else to talk about her. Also, apparently her powers are nuts. Which is weird. And now to the worst character of the show, Spinarella. What the? What? What's going on? Wait, witch, did you do anything to my reality? Ah, oh, the bitch probably tried something. Wait, I, one sec, give me a sec. I need to fix this. Ugh, finally. God damn that evil bitch. Ugh, oh, the fucking bitch. We are gonna have a big talk about this when I show you the fucking bitch. So yeah, where are we at? Oh, Spinarella. The token fat bitch woman of the show even though in this image she doesn't look very fat but yeah she is the fat one from the show and I will say that the reason why she's my least favorite character even though it's kind of the same thing as Natasha is because she's a wind user wind user you know wind users people that make tornadoes that can fly you know those characters this is the the, that character f for this show. And you know what? It's the biggest disrespect to every single goddamn wind user ever. It just pisses me off that this thing is the representation for the wind you attacker. Why? Because apparently the the for the everyone else in the Monster Resistance, no one knows what she does. And they basically act like they are practically meaningless. Like for Natasha, whose power is nuts. Makes sense. But for Spinarella, a person whose power is wind? How the fuck is that a not used for power? Like, do these people that make their show have a problem with wind users? Or they were like, oh, in the Avatar, the most powerful captors was a wind user. So if we make her one that worst captors will be seen excellent it's just bullshit win users need to respect moro moro from lego ninja go go got respect by taking down all the four ninjas ninjas as and was extremely powerful to a point that he could actually fight on power with master wu if he was actually interested in being master wu but he wasn't he was interested in helping master wu then, then I and from the Avatar was also done with respect, as well as Tens and from Legend of Korra. When users need respect, and this thing is the biggest disrespect to win attackers ever. Seriously, the show wants to be the first as fuck, but yet they make the win user a disrespectful bitch. That's only flipping thing is there to be the fat bitch. Even though they could have easily have a, a, every other character be fat. How I mean, heard that, that Enchanta makes more sense to be the fat one because the fact that she uses her legs, her hair to walk and she only eats fast food. How even faster than fat, regular fast food. But hell, the, I would prefer a horrible design Enchanta over the character with the power of wind to be a disrespect as much as this one. Seriously, what the f you can say the fantasy show all you want, but the fact that they actually put the character who has the power of wind to net us for God's sakes, such a disrespect, such a useless piece of piece of everything. You people are the worst. This is the worst thing they have done. Now, if you excuse me to calm down before I before I break the reality. The, because this disrespect, in fact, I'm playing going in that dimension and killing every single goddamn character except in Chapter and Catcher, sure, just because this fucking thing is supposed to be the win user. And now she might get more in the second season, but considering how bad of a study give this win user, it's shameful. Alright. Sorry about my little outburst there, but 
I expect when you use a lot more than these show arms do. And now let's go into Fasta. I like her design, it's pretty good. I kinda I kinda don't understand why she's supposed to be so small and maybe she's 